was getting ready for school one day, I picked up some lotion and was going to put it on my face. It looked a little weird, but I figured my mom bought me some new lotion. So when I got to school, everyone was staring at me, but I didn't know why. I see my friend Zai and I asked him, Yo, why is everyone staring at me? It might be because of your face. I ain't never seen your face that smooth. My face is smooth? What the heck is he talking about? So I went to the bathroom to see what he was talking about. Woo, my face is smooth. It must be that new lotion. So I went back outside smiling because my face is smooth. All of a sudden, Brayton comes up to me and smacks a piece of paper on my face. Oh, everyone, Desmond's wearing makeup. I didn't know it was makeup. I didn't know. I thought it was lotion. What more do you want from me? Stop it. Am I the asshole for expecting my girlfriend to pay for her stay at my family's cabin? My grandparents own a big cabin where every generation after them enjoyed annual family vacations. Due to the cabin's age, there's constant maintenance that needs to be done. Every time we replaced, fixed, or repaired something, there's another thing that needs fixing. We also started renovating the cabin as the interior has also became quite dated. The rule is every person from the age of 20 years old needs to pay an annual fee to be able to stay at the cabin. The fee varies and I've happily paid this fee ever since the rule was implemented. I decided to invite my girlfriend. Am I the asshole for expecting my girlfriend to pay her stay at my family's cabin? So everyone 20 years old and up needs to pay an annual fee. I decided to invite my girlfriend. She's ecstatic about the idea of meeting my extended family and going to the cabin. She's also very curious about it after hearing me talk about it a lot. Naturally, I sat her down and told her about the rule and how she needed to pay as everyone else paid. This fee is around $200 to $400 depending on how many people use the cabin. This is due to a big roof leak and some pretty substantial water damage. This upset her and we argued and she's saying she'll make other plans without me this summer. If you scare easily, swipe on. In 1989, a woman started hearing strange banging sounds in her walls and in the ceiling. And then one night, the crawl space to her attic was open, so she went to go have a look. When she's just feet away, an old man suddenly appears in the crawl space and looks her dead in the eye before vanishing. There was nobody else in the house. Worried no one's going to take her seriously over an apparent ghost in her house, she ends up calling a paranormal investigator. When the paranormal crew arrived, they were actually very skeptical until they heard loud banging in the attic and they decided to go up and have a look. As soon as the two men get up into the attic, one of them screams and suddenly disappears. The other, who didn't have a flashlight, starts using the flash on his camera to illuminate the attic and he takes one of the most famous pictures in paranormal history. His partner, who was in total shock, had been lifted off the ground and tied to one of the beams. That was the last night the woman ever stayed in the house. However, it's still being rented out today, but nobody stays longer than one or two. Story time about how I was voted the ugliest girl in high school. Disclaimer is not my story time, it's sending me on Instagram. Growing up, I was really awkward. My parents always used to call me the ugly duckling, but my dad told me not to worry that when I would grow up, I would become beautiful. Honestly, this really stuck to my head and I am very beautiful now. I used to have braces, acne. My hair has always been curly, but I didn't know how to treat it back then. My mom had really straight hair, so she had no idea how to do my hair either. And this was the toughest thing for me. I would show up to school with knots in my hair because I didn't even know how to brush it. Eventually, my mom did start taking better care of my hair, which really helped. I also didn't know how to dress for my body. I wore big hoodies, big t-shirts, while the other girls in my high school dressed for their body type. I honestly just had no clue. I did get bullied, but mostly by boys. I think the girls probably just felt bad for me, so I never really had problems with other girls. A group of boys would always bother me. One of them even asked me out pretending that he wanted to go out with me. Of course I said yes because I actually believed him. He asked me to go to the movies, and when I showed up, he wasn't there. I decided to go watch the movie anyway, but the next day in school, I couldn't hear the end of it. To my face, this guy called me stupid. A few days later, they made a list of the ugliest girls. Part two is up. Story time about how I was voted the ugliest girl in high school. Disclaimer is not my story time I sent me on Instagram. That's when the boys came out with the list of the ugliest girls in high school. What they did was pass around some flyers with all the names on it, and then they had people write the number one ugliest girl on the list. As soon as I saw my name on the list, I wanted to die. I pretended I was sick and went home. There was this one girl who actually stood up for me and the rest of the girls, and she was actually one of the prettiest girls in the entire school. She told everyone to knock it off, but nobody listened to her. Instead, the boys added her to the list as well, but there was no way that she was going to get voted number one. I would show up every day to school that week wishing that I was dead. Finally, on Friday, they came out with the winner. And of course, everyone picked me. I was completely mortified, but I actually started laughing when I saw the list. It was like the stress from the entire week had finally accumulated, and my reaction was to just laugh. 
While they were all hoping that I was just going to break down and cry, I started to laugh in their faces. The teacher asked me what was wrong and I showed her the list. She ran over to the principal's office and everything became way too dramatic for me. So I literally decided to run away from school. When I got home, I told my parents everything. Part three is up. Story time about how I was voted the ugliest girl in high school. Disclaimer is not my story time was sent me on Instagram. When I got home and told my parents what happened, my dad actually started to cry. He actually did feel really bad for me. They sat me down and told me that looks weren't everything. That's when my dad told me again that I would grow out of this awkward phase. Then they decided to take me shopping to the mall. We went into this really cute clothing store that I had always wanted to go to but never had the courage to. And they actually bought me a full wardrobe. After that, that's when my mom took me to a salon and they actually did my hair. They gave me a whole hair care routine, which I had never even heard of before. And I even went and got some noxema, which actually the noxema really worked for my acne. So when I got back to school, I felt like a different person, but not really because I was still me. The principal had gone out of her way to make all the boys pay, but really they only got suspension and didn't go to school for a week. The rest of high school was actually not that bad. I did look a lot better. Five years later, I'm absolutely gorgeous. And guess what? One of the boys who bullied me actually slipped into my DMs last week. What should I say? When I was in fourth grade, I started becoming friends with this girl, Maddie. She was the coolest girl in the grade. Everyone loved her. She wasn't a mean, popular girl, though. She was really nice. One day, Maddie invited me over for a sleepover, and I, of course, said yes. So I'm at Maddie's house. We're having a great time. But one thing I didn't tell Maddie is that I'm slightly lactose intolerant. And her dad made three cheese macaroni that night for dinner. But I was too nervous to say anything, so I ate the entire bowl. And then we started watching a movie, and I'm really not feeling good. So I go to the bathroom, and I take a huge shit. But for some reason, the toilet isn't flushing. It's not clogged, but you just can't flush. So I panic. I look through her bathroom cabinets and I find Ziploc bags. I reach into the toilet and I take my shit out and I put it in the Ziploc bag. And then I throw it out the window. A few weeks later in school, Maddie tells me that her mom is worried they have a peeping Tom coming to their house trying to scare them. Her mom called the police and asked them to keep an eye on her street. And when I asked Maddie why her mom thought that, she said, well, it's pretty gross, but he pooped in a Ziploc bag and threw it at her rose bushes. Maddie said my mom's really upset because the rose bushes are where my mom put my grandma's ashes. I was like, oh yeah, that's super scary. Hopefully they find the guy who did that. And Story time on how I slept with my 78 year old grandma so I can be in his will. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. Going straight to the point here, my grandpa is rich. My parents, on the other hand, are broke. Now, I may be 17 years old, but I have a huge heart. My grandpa is sick and has cancer. He's so lonely, and since I have such a big heart, I decided I wanted to help. My grandpa was in the process of writing his will, and I wanted to make sure my spot was secure. And I wanted to make sure my grandpa was good too well one day i visited my grandpa at the hospital when no one else in my family was there it was 7 p.m and i set the mood by closing the curtains i then looked at my grandpa and i kissed him he seemed shocked but i can tell he liked it with that smile and i caressed his bald head and went on top of him Part 2 on how I slept with my 78 year old grandpa so I can be in his will. Okay, so boom, like I said, I caressed my grandpa's bald head and got on top of him. And once I got on top, the rest was history. Best minute of my life. I did a good deed and I left with majority of my grandpa's money in the will. My family is jealous, but they didn't have a big heart like I did. I cared about my grandpa going through cancer. What can I say? My sister and I have always been mistaken as twins. I'm 19 and she's 16, but we had the same height, skin tone, and similar voice. She also has a habit of being a copycat, from the way I dress to hobbies, even piercings. I know it's cute if you look at it from the outside, but sometimes it gets annoying. Like, yeah, we are quite close too, but why does she always happen to pick up everything I pick up? One afternoon, I was tidying up some costumes in my college showroom and found a rather cute brown and pink wig. It looks like a mushroom. I put it on, think it looks rather funny, so I snapped a picture and posted it to my Instagram. I received a text from my sister asking if I really cut my hair. I didn't mention it was a wig. While I somewhat have a feeling that she might copy that too, I lied and replied, yes. I came home that weekend and lo and behold, my sister emerged with the same silly brown and pink bob cut, except this one is on her permanent hair. She was surprised that I arrived with my hair still long, then realized that I liked her. She was furious that she had to cut that silly hairstyle because she thought I had it. Our parents think that it's a really bad joke and wanted me to cut my hair too to make it up to her. So am I the asshole for telling my sister I cut my hair when I really didn't? Am I the asshole for making my sister-in-law feel like shit about her weight? I'm 35 and my sister-in-law is 46. I have three children, the oldest being 16. For my birthday last week, my son went out and bought me this swinging hammock chair that I had been wanting for two years and it cost him quite a bit of his saved money, which I fully intend to put back into his bank account so he can continue saving. He was so excited to see me open this gift and couldn't wait to help me set it up. 
I told him he shouldn't have, that it was a lot of money and his response was, you never get anything nice. I wanted you to have it. And it was true. I usually don't get anything for my birthday or Christmases outside of Tupperware or soaps. So it might sound stupid, but I have cherished this swing ever since he got it for me, especially where I finally have something nice that's mine. My sister-in-law comes over once a week to see all of us and she immediately headed straight for my swing, which my son had hooked up on our deck. I told her to please not sit on it and she said, is there a weight limit? So I told her yes, 250 pounds and I even showed her the box to confirm. She was not upset about this. She just said, that's a bummer. They need to make something capable of holding us big girls. I simply agreed with her and went back to my business. At this point, my husband shows up from work. When I went inside to grab us some drinks, her and my husband were talking on the porch and not even five minutes later, I hear a loud crash. My husband says, fuck, are you all right? I go out and sure enough, she had sat in my swing and the crochet netting around the hook snapped on the one side, causing her to fall right on her ass. She's sitting there laughing, gets up and says, I guess I need to learn to listen. So I lost it. As I already said, I never get anything nice. Never. This is the one thing that I had that was mine and it didn't even take someone a freaking week before they ruined it for me. So I said, I literally just fucking told you not even 20 minutes ago that it would not hold you and to please not fucking sit in it. She makes some comment about, usually the weight limit is a lie. I thought it would hold. So I said, the weight limit would probably hold if you were only 50 pounds heavier, not 150. She's 420-ish pounds because she's one of those girls who eats food on camera for money and she absolutely loves her weight. But regardless, instead of apologizing or offering to compensate me money for my destroyed item, she resorted to saying that I'm a shit bag for making her feel like her weight is a problem and my husband is on her side. He said, it's just a fucking swing. Crazy story time about how my mom kidnapped my sister. So my mom and dad split whenever I was really young. And at this time, they were always in and out of court battling for custody over my sister and I. Well, the one day my dad drives my mom downtown to the courthouse because she didn't have a ride. And before she gets out of the car, she's like, can I give the girls a hug? And my dad was like, yeah, go ahead. Little background information. I was more of a daddy's girl. My sister was more of a mommy's girl, which is probably the reason why she took her. I was sitting by the window. My sister was sitting in the middle seat. So she gives me a hug. Next thing I know, my sister's seatbelt was unbuckled and my mom was running across the street with her in the middle of downtown. Didn't even look for cars. So my dad got out of the car, ran over, grabbed her, picked both of them up and walked over to the sidewalk and my mom was screaming bloody murder. So this guy called the cops and my dad was trying to show them custody papers because he had full custody. But the cop knew my mom so he let her take my sister. We got her back but I didn't see this bitch for like four months. Is this a sackable offense? My boyfriend went out for his mate's birthday last weekend. Okay. All of his friends brought their girlfriends along. However, Brian, I didn't get an invite. He said, I didn't get invited. They had booked a table and they wouldn't be able to add me onto the booking as Bullshit. there was already too many people Bullsh going. Which to be fair, I wasn't too bothered about as I'm not the biggest fan of the friend whose birthday okay, is anyway. Which... Fast forward to 4 a.m. the next morning when I get a phone call from my oh, boyfriend. I out, yeah asking me to pick him up. Being the good girlfriend I am, I got out of bed and drove to get him from town. My boyfriend then began to tell me he had a funny story from the night. Oh, I bet you did. Apparently, a girl he had never met before was buying him drinks all night. When I asked him if he mentioned to her at all that he had a girlfriend, he said no, because then she would have stopped buying him drinks. I literally want to cry. So if you didn't know, I have a sister. And her name's Ashley. And we both have boyfriends. And every night we both fall asleep on the phone with our boyfriends. So one day we're all hanging out and we're like just talking. And my sister's boyfriend looks at me and he's like, you need to stop going into your sister's room in the middle of the night. And I look at him and I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't have a reason to go into her room. Like I, I don't go into her room, especially in the middle of the night. Then my boyfriend hops in the conversation and he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, no, I hear Ashley go into Kayla's room every night and stare at her. So me and my sister both look at each other and we're like, we don't go into each other's rooms, do we? And we agreed that we do not. And they said this has been going on for months. So for months, somebody or something has been going into me and my sister's room for about 15 minutes every night and watching us sleep. <laughs> but it only gets worse. Am I the asshole for ruining my sister-in-law's honeymoon by exposing her racism? Disclaimer, this is not my story. My female 27, sister-in-law, female 30, got married last weekend. She's my long-term boyfriend's male 32 sister. They're white and I'm Middle Eastern, dark with black hair. She was looking for a photographer that didn't bank up her, so I suggested a friend of mine who's new in business and charge less than half because these things cost over $5,000 these days. She was excited, so I started a group chat with her and my photographer friend. We talked a little and later they met and they started messaging directly to each other. The wedding was amazing and everything went smoothly. I was one of her guests and she seemed very happy. The next day they went off to their honeymoon. 
I don't know if it was by mistake, but instead of texting the photographer directly like she's done for the past few months, she texted him to our old group chat. She thanked him and had a favor to ask him and wonder if he could reach out some flowers in the pictures, but also take me off of some of the photos. Am I the asshole for ruining my sister-in-law's honeymoon by exposing her racism? Disclaimer, this is not my story. She thanked him but had a favor to ask him and wondered if he could reach out some flowers in the pictures. But also wanted to know if he could take me off some of the photos because I'm too dark and it ruined the color palette. Not all the pictures, just the ones that she's in. I texted back, are you kidding me, and she didn't answer. I then took a screenshot and posted it on my Instagram story tagging her in it. She called my boyfriend crying her eyes out calling me an asshole for embarrassing her and ruining her honeymoon. My boyfriend said it was a low blow. I was blinded by rage when I did it, but even now that I'm calm, I still don't feel like I was an asshole. But people have been contacting her apparently asking if she really wrote this. She's really beautiful and successful, so please don't blame it on jealousy or the fact that she's scared of being outshined. For the people that say like, I don't like to wear a lot of makeup or like that's so much makeup, I could never wear that much. Could you never wear this much or do you just not know how to do it? I'll leave that there. Just a question.